Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for the invitation and then people the, who work for this uh, the exchange program and, and workshop. Then especially I thank for the chair professors from guest department. Yeah, even if uh, the, this is not uh, your area. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so since the the audience are not e experts the in the field, I am trying to like uh, expose uh, the what are the the problem that we are considering, and then uh, in, in the second half of the the talk, I'm going to the, the present to what what is done. Uh, in, uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. So the topic. Uh. Uh. My from the title, the we, the look at the 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 phenomenon like a, or the problem like a scattering, which is called, and then the target equation is Benjamin Uno equation. Some one class of the Benjamin the dispersive equation. <coughs> so this is a collaboration with my uh, the PhD student who is in the audience, the Kihan Kim. <coughs> Okay, so let me uh, start with uh, the uh, <coughs> the elementary the the explanation of the to the the dispersive equation because uh, the actually the we the the the, the problem or area that I'm working on is, is uh, regarded as nonlinear dispersive equation. Okay, so nonlinear dispersive equation uh, is one uh, like a class of partial differential equation uh, when uh, uh, the the linear equation they, they describe some wave motion. Like wave motion can be uh, uh, arise from uh, some many the physical applications, and then especially some uh, from like water wave and the, or the quantum mechanics or and, and there are many. But anything we can call the as a wave uh, will be uh, this, the classified as a dispersive equation. So here, the meaning of the dispersion is a uh, is the is, is, is when uh, when you have a sort of wave, then as time goes by solving the equation, when wave spread out in wider region, then uh, such a phenomena is called disper dispersion. So in in most uh, the dispersive equation we consider the we have. Uh, uh, the linear dispersive equation the the imposes some relation between uh, spatial frequency and the temporal frequency by the giving the equation, and then uh, due to such a uh, the the, the <coughs> relation between uh, that the we can expect that um, the plane of the, the some waves uh, at different velocity uh, propagate in different speed. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the uh, sorry, so plane wave at different frequency that propagate in different velocity. Okay, so as a result of such a the different velocity, we can expect that uh, initially the even if wave is uh, localized in some uh, smaller space at time zero. So for example, one can think as uh, the low frequency wave and high frequency wave are, are are supported in a small region. Then as time goes. Since a uh, high frequency wave uh, the travel faster than low frequency waves, so we can expect they are separating. Okay, so that is the main uh, source that uh, the dispersion. Okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, this is uh, like uh, some mathematical formulation of uh, such a uh, uh, dispersion uh, the phenomena. Okay. So the in fact uh, this uh, the linear propagator operator this is unitary in l2 so we can expect uh, like l2 norm so which means wave the, we can expect l2 norm is preserved which means uh, wave do not go uh, away wave just stay in the euclidean space but uh, if you look at the higher LP norm, like uh, for example L, L infinity norm, then due to the dispersion relation, relation the, they has to decay in some sense. Okay. So this is uh, uh, called the dispersive equa equation. And then uh, by uh, using some sort of harmonic analytic technique, one can uh, reformulate such a dispersive dispersion estimate by some space-time norm bound, which is called generally called the strict Hartz estimate. So, for the linear solution, if you look at uh, the space-time norm, the integrating in x first, and then integrating in 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 time, then it is still finite. Okay. So, which means after integrating in in x, because uh, it, it is still in 
LQ no mean time, which mean, that means as time goes, the uh, LR norm of the of the solution of the linear solution has to decay in time. Okay, so this is uh, another uh, like so. So basically, the, the space-time norm bound do the give give some summability of uh, of LR norm of the solution. Okay, so basically, uh, those are uh, like uh, such a. Uh, uh, some mathematical formulation which detected the dispersion phenomena was a main tool for the last 30 years <coughs> in the theory of the nonlinear dispersive equation. <coughs> so, uh, as uh, you, you see here, so for linear solution to, uh, in, in the dispersive equation, the we basically know almost everything. Okay, so especially when uh, the, the Linear, the linear solution the, when, when the, with, with the constant coefficient. Okay? So, but uh, our, uh, the, the main interest is to nonlinear equation. When under the, uh, this linear equation, when we add some sort of weak uh, nonlinear term, mostly algebraic type, then uh, there are some sort of competition between the linear dispersion effect and then nonlinear feedback. Okay. So these, those are the some example of the of the the, in, the nonlinear equation which is intensively studied. Uh, some nonlinear wave equation or nonlinear analysis equation is most inten in intensively studied, and then KDV uh, or the the topic of today is, is Benjamin equation, which is uh, close to uh, the KDV equation. <coughs> so they have a sort of nonlinear term. And some has uh, some derivative, some does not have a derivative. Okay? And then, uh, one can, for example, for the, if you look at the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, you can understand uh, the, 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 the coefficient of u, which is uh, the u to the p minus 1, as a potential of the, the Schrodinger equation. So, uh, because uh, uh, this may have a po positive or negative sign, you can think of the some Schrodinger equation with the positive potential or the negative potential, right? So, which play a role of the repulsive potential or attractive potential, okay? So, uh, in some case, in, in many cases of the, the nonlinear dispersive equation, such a nonlinear term has a two the opposite the role. So one uh, uh, two opposite effect. One is uh, the repulsive, or the or the we we call it uh, the defocusing, and then uh, or attractive, or the, we also the, the call it the focusing cases. Okay. So especially when uh, the nonlinear term is uh, is attractive. Then uh, the nonlinear effect and the linear dispersion effect uh, are conflict. The li linear dispersion the, the effect try to the spread out solution, but the nonlinear feedback the try to concentrate the solution. Okay, so they uh, they are two uh, the different effect the uh, uh, the compete and then it creates some uh, interesting dynamics of the dispersive equation. <coughs> Nonlinear equations. So this is uh, some scenario of the nonlinear solutions. So as we 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 have seen, uh, the scenario of the linear solution is very uh, simple, just the dispersion. But when we have uh, some uh, the focusing nonlinearity, nonlinear terms, then uh, due to uh, like uh, the nonlinear effect, uh, when uh, especially when when focusing uh, the, to, due to nonlinear effect. Uh, uh, we can expect uh, like uh, we we can classify the scenario in three steps. So for the first one, it's called the scattering, which is the topic of the today. <coughs> uh, this happens when uh, dispersion effect are uh, stronger than nonlinear terms, which means uh, even if even present uh, pre uh, the pre nonlinear term present, uh, when dispersion effect is stronger, then the, we can still expect the nonlinear effect is, is getting smaller and smaller, so which means the solu solution converts to a uh, linear solution, at, and then also disperses as, as a linear solution. In other case, opposite case, when nonlinear term is stronger in, 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 in some sense, then uh, we can expect uh, like uh, some concentration. So the, that uh, case uh, is called the blow up, and the blow up may happen in finite or infinite time. <coughs> so the, the, even uh, with this uh, dispersion, uh, the, the effect, we can uh, expect some concentration. Or uh, 
the the most uh, the interesting uh, the case the the is the balance of the two opposite effect when nonlinear term and then dispersion effect are, are comparable when they make some balance so there is a solution to which do not disperse and which do not uh, the concentrate further so which means they, there is a, there are solutions uh, just with the permanent shape or even the without the permanent shape they do not disperse or concentrate just just to uh, make some form and then uh, propagate in some uh, some speed. Okay, so this is uh, the story for the when uh, the nonlinear term is focusing. Okay, but when nonlinear term is defocusing, then still uh, it's uh, it's uh, in my opinion it's less interesting than focusing cases because it's the uh, nonlinear effect and then uh, linear dispersion effect uh, both uh, they, they play they, they try to the spread out spread out so, so solutions okay so we expect all solutions scatters except for that uh, nonlinear uh, feedback is too large than uh, the linear dispersion effect okay so in in, in defocusing case we can expect it as a scattering <coughs> so only no, no. no. Yeah. Mm. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, as I uh, said, the the balance is, is a sort of a non-dispersing solid solution, the, which is uh, some special case of that is 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 called soliton. Some some solution which uh, form. Uh, a permanent shape, and then sometimes it could uh, propagate with the with, with 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 constant speed. Okay, so that is uh, can be uh, observed by exact balance of the dispersion and 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 nonlinear feedback. But it turns out that uh, this soliton phenomena is pretty generic and then pretty uh, natural in that global dynamics. So it is conjecture that uh, which is. Uh, Therefore, generic initial data, and then after a long time, the solution is decomposed into some of several solitones that are propagating with a different speed, and then dispersing part, which is basically follow the linear equations. So, do you mean stability of soliton wave times stability? <laughs> so, you mean that okay, soliton wave is time asymptotic stable? <laughs> time, oh, time stable? What, what do you mean? With? Time asymptotic is stable. It, it, time. Well, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand in what. Time. What. Yeah. It's intrinsically stable in time. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, the it, it depends. Yeah. But uh, the, the when whenever we say uh, a soliton, then it is a symptotic, it, it is stable. First of all, or orbitally stable. But it, it depends. In some cases, are symptotically stable, or some cases not. Nah. Yeah. Okay, so and then the, this soliton resolution phenomena uh, is wide open, uh, like a conjecture in, in this field, and then the the most uh, like work uh, the, the studying the global behavior of the solution uh, is toward that direction to to approach it to uh, to this soliton resolution, and then some sort of uh, like uh, the problem who, which shows scattering uh, is also basically a very first step of to to to. Uh, to approaching to uh, this uh, uh, the uh, soliton phenomenon, soliton resolution, <coughs> and then when uh, the some some very uh, the special class of example like uh, integrable equation uh, for for example for for KDV equation, then this soliton resolution is in some sense uh, a theorem, yeah, yeah. by due to uh, the the inverse scattering transform, then it is uh, known a long time ago. <coughs> okay, so then uh, the let me uh, the start. Uh, explaining what's uh, the scattering problem. <coughs> so, uh, at the as I told you uh, the before, when uh, the dispersion effect uh, is stronger, and then once we expect the solution the decay to disperse out, then as you sol the solution u converts to zero, then each nonlinear term u to the some higher power is decay to zero even faster. So, which means the equation contains uh, uh, the linear part and the with this nonlinear part, but the nonlinear terms 
is decay to zero even faster than the, than some of the linear terms. So which, uh, so because of that, we can expect nonlinear equation is a sort of a perturbative equation of the linear equation. Okay, and then as the nonlinear term is getting smaller and smaller, we can expect nonlinear solution converge to some linear solution. Okay, so this uh, phenomena is is called uh, generally sc scattering. So uh, we can the, the propose such a scattering uh, the problem uh, to the negative infinity in time or positive infinity in time. Okay, so that may could be different. So you, the, in general, uh, roughly speaking, the scattering can occur when a uh, nonlinear nonlinear term is repulsive, like a defocusing cases. And then when, uh, even for, for the focusing cases, when initial data uh, has a, the small kinetic energy or the small mass to, fo the, to form a, a non-scattering solution, which is uh, like a smallest the, the solitone, like a ground state, <coughs> then the, we can expect the scattering occur. Okay, so most uh, scattering problem is to show under those conditions the scattering happens, right? So the and then uh, the topic of the of today is is one of those example. Okay, <coughs> and uh, the from uh, the some or the like uh, the perturbation as a result of the perturbation theory, such a scattering, the which is this convergence uh, the statement is reformulated as a finiteness of space-time norm of nonlinear solution. So this is UTX is nonlinear solution, and then uh, if one show that this some finiteness of the space-time norms, then that. Uh, immediately imply uh, the scattering. So main goal uh, is to show the finiteness of such a such the such a space time norm. Okay. So uh, so as you see from the finite the space time norm, so to show this is finite, so we have to show some sort of decay uh, in time when we like integrate in in, in x in something. Okay. So it, in in general for all of all the scattering problem, the very crucial part of the of the theorem is, is related to some decay estimate, but not the decay estimate of the linear solution. For the linear solution, we know well decay estimate, right? But we directly has to prove decay estimate for some nonlinear solution. That is, uh, that is uh, like a main always main ingredient of the scattering problem. Okay, so for last uh, the twenty years, uh, there is a uh, like uh, uh, some great uh, development in the scattering problem for the energy critical and mass critical problem, and then um, so 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 in in our work, I we are going to also to follow some. Uh, like a current uh, the, the strategy, uh, the the first presented by the Kenig and Mel. Okay, <coughs> but such an idea is is implicitly the already pre presented by the Bruggen in in 1998. <coughs> so basically, we have uh, uh, two steps. One is uh, some compactness argument, and then the other is a uh, decay estimate. So, <coughs> uh, so when we assume the scattering phase. So, which means there is a solution scattering of the, the, the scattering uh, space-time norm is infinity. Then, by uh, some concentration, some some sort of compactness argument, to, we're gonna uh, extract some minimal uh, minimal non-scattering solution or minimal blow solution. Okay. So, for for this part, we need this, we need to use some compactness argument. And then, once we extract such a minimal non-scattering solutions, then uh, by the same argument, one can show that the orbit of that solution is also compact, pre-compact. Okay, so that we we are going to use that compactness of the that minimal solution to the some decay estimate to make the contradiction. Okay, so because the orbit is compact, they uh, it, it cannot uh, the co uh, exist with uh, uh, with, with some, some 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 decay. Okay, so in in the theory of the, the nonlinear wave equation or the Schrodinger equation, uh, the some decay estimate of the nonlinear nonlinear solution is, is known for a while, 
for a long time. So since the 1950s, for example, moral wage inequality or the filial inequality was uh, used to for to show uh, to used as a decay estimate. But uh, uh, the, 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 in the topic of, of today, like a Benjamin Ono equation or the KDV equation, so such, the, such a decay estimate is, is a bit uh, the trickier than the earlier example. <coughs> okay, so this is a uh, uh, short, uh, like, I mean, I, I just uh, collected a, a, a milestone work uh, the regarding to uh, this direction. So the, this is uh, very far from the complete uh, the list. And then among those, uh, uh, the development from the starting from the, the defocusing energy critical wave equation by is true. And then uh, the, the, uh, 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 the precise uh, like a formulation <laughs> that we are going to use is, is presented by the Kennedy Mel in 2006. <coughs> and then uh, since uh, we are working on Benjamin Uno equation, so the, the, or not the, the, the next the important reference is, is Dustin of, of, of last year for defocusing the critical GKDB. Okay, so the, the here the, the he, 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 he used some, some monotonistic formula to show like a, a, the scattering. Okay. So could you show the previous slide? The concentration compactness, you are saying that the OBD is also compact. So mm -hmm. It means that the so soliton like solution is excluded. No, no, no. So, the so you are just talking about the defocusing case there? Mm -hmm. No, no, the, this concentration compactness do not, uh, it, it works for both focusing and defocusing. Yeah. It do not, uh, uh, like, uh, so if there is a minimal solution, right, minimal mass solution, then it is almost periodic. So that includes the case of the soliton as well. So we have to exclude the soliton cases by using decay estimate. Okay, so then now let me start uh, the introducing uh, the Benjamin Uno equation. <coughs> so, so we are uh, working on uh, the, the for the Benjamin Uno equation. This is uh, it, it's a second order and the real value the, the, the equation with the nonlinear term uh, with in some degree with one derivative, and then the here H is a Hilbert transformation. So Hilbert transformation, uh, the, the, the easiest way to see is it's a it's, 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 it's symbol, Fourier symbol. Fourier symbol is uh, just a sign, okay? So because of that, the, even if U is Schwarz function, the, the Hilbert transformation of something cannot be in Schwarz functions, <coughs> okay? So uh, this is uh, some uh, the elementary fact. We, the, the among those, so here, so when uh, the, for, 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 for such a K, uh, the, the, the critical, critical uh, sobolev norm is HSK, and then SK is, is a number between zero and half. Okay? So, and then, so also one thing that I uh, notice is uh, the energy class, energy is given by the U, H, U sub X, which means this is supported on, on H half. Energy, energy class is H half. So, which means for any k, this is generalized Benjamin Uno equation and en energy is subcritical, and then mass when uh, k uh, greater than uh, three, then it is it is mass supercritical. Mass supercritical. <coughs> okay. So we are looking at the case uh, actually. <coughs> okay. So the one of the, the crucial the ingredient of this work is a monotonicity formula which is uh, i mean another name of the the decay estimate <coughs> uh, so, so so this monotonicity formula uh the has a the different like uh, origin from like a uh, moravec or video inequality in the nls or wave equation the, this is some sort of a special uh, the feature of, of, of this ben benjamin on equation and also the kdv type equations so if you look back the uh, disper dispersion relations it, it is like this okay so if you look at uh, the group velocity the group velocity it, 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 it's given by like uh, the derivative of uh, the of dispersion relations, and then it is basically when we have a wave packet uh, with frequency psi, then it group velocity is a sp is a velocity that the, uh, the the wave packet propagate. Okay, 
Okay? So by looking at the, uh, the group velocity, uh, okay, so group velo velocity is getting larger as the frequency is higher. It is natural. And then, but the one uh, thing they really, the, what, what is the important here is a group velocity is always positive, which means all wave packet any, with any frequency is propagating to the right, to the right direction. Okay? So this is a phenomenon it's called the unidirectional propagation. Okay? So due to such a unidirectional uh, propagation, though we can expect every wave packet move, move to the right. Okay? But by here, if you uh, look at, if you write down the solu soliton solution, then soliton has to move to the, to the left. So that uh, makes uh, some decomposition between soliton and, and uh, just wave packets. <coughs> and then moreover, uh, as a higher frequency, uh, the wave packet moves to the right even faster than low frequency wave packet, we can expect that uh, center of energy is uh, moving faster than center of mass. Okay? You can recall the center of energy is uh, more weighted on higher frequency than mass. Mass is basically L2 norm. Sen energy is basically H half norm. Okay? So, so this is what we can expect the, the heuristically. And then uh, we, we have proved such a monotony theory. Okay? So center of energy uh, is moving faster than center of mass. And then we can rewrite uh, this formula by this, uh, the inequality interaction form, which means, so here, the rho of x is the center of mass and uh, density of mass, and then E of y uh, is the density of, of energy. And then if you look at the, the, like, the, the difference, then, then it has to, has to grow, okay? <coughs> Okay, so in fact, uh, this monotony theory formula, this, the first observed by, by Tao in 2006 for Benjamin, the, for modified, uh, sorry, for uh, KDV equation setting. Okay, KDV equation and Benjaminon equation that share the, exactly this uh, pro phenomena, unidirectional propagation. So by looking at uh, the dispersion relation of, of, of this and then group velocity, this is uh, always negative. So the tau has proved uh, the monotony theory formula. And then so our the proof for the monotony theory formula basically uh, follow a similar line, but uh, because of uh, uh, like uh, the, the Hilbert transformation, it encountered with some sort of technical issues, and then uh, basically we the, out, the, the in the in the proof that the novelty is to solve that technical issues uh, the coming from the, the Hilbert transformation, and and positivity of some functional. Okay, and then ten years later, so by using this monotony theory formula as a non rigidity formula, the basically decay estimate. For KDV, defocusing KDV flow, Van Dassen has proved uh, the scattering for the defocusing uh, GKDV equation like by, by showing uh, this space time norm is, is finite. Okay. And then one can think of the similar problem for the focusing uh, GKDV equation. Like uh, since the focusing equation, equation, since we have uh, the soliton uh, ground state, so it is conjectural that when mass uh, less than the mass of ground state, then the scattering holds. But uh, for for this problem, uh, the no the so no one uh, knows uh, like uh, effective uh, like a monotony theory formula for the focusing GKDB. So it, it turns out uh, this is uh, quite uh, tricky. Okay. Okay, so then our the main result is 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 still that of the the analogous to Dawson, uh, is scattering in in energy space. So when K, the degree is high, and then we assume like a defocusing, k is integer, and then any energy solution has to scatter by showing some, uh, like a, the the space time norm is is, is bounded by mass and energy. <coughs> Okay, so so as I uh, uh, explained the, the in, in earlier slide, the main step is to use uh, the concentration companies and then monotony theory formula that we obtained just before, and then also 
uh, the, the in the in in such a the, the argument of the kinetic mail, that we have to uh, the play with uh, like uh, the some critical local existence theory and as a perturbation theory, and then for this case, uh, not only the, cli the the critical local theory, I mean the subcritical theory is also essentially the used. So that's why the, we have to assume uh, some energy solution. Okay, so uh, this uh, is, is, is slightly uh, rather technical, uh, but uh, let me uh, the simply ex uh, quickly explain what the what's uh, the lo local theory, and then because uh, the main source of the, the difficulty for this Benjamin on the problem uh, compared to the GKDV is from like uh, the some the, some some <coughs> some trickiness of the uh, of, of this local theory. Okay, so. <coughs> Main ingredient of the local existence for for this uh, the generalized Benjamin Uno is is uh, local smoothing estimate. So, uh, so if you look at this, then local smoothing estimate uh, recover half a derivative, and then this is also one part of the local. The, that is called maximal estimate, but it is also regarded as one part of the local smoothing, and then one can obtain uh, uh, the other local smoothing just by interpolating those two. <coughs> But the problem here is uh, this Benjamin on local smoothing recover only half a derivative, but it in each nonlinear term has a one full derivative. Okay? So the technically, because of the of that, we have to the use local smoothing and its dual estimate to recover full derivative. Then they naturally that forced to use to our the, uh, the, the the second local smoothing, the, which is uh, involved in L infinity norm in time. Okay, and then moreover, uh, the the other the, the technical difficulty in 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 this local uh, theory uh, is is that uh, we cannot use uh, the the user the, the the given uh, linear so linear equation as a reference equation for the perturbation theory. We have to modify the linear equation by uh, reduce to, uh, to reduce to our nonlinear term. Okay, so. It, it contains a strong the low high interaction, so we have to the, uh, the decompose the linear term the into several pieces, and then we uh, we take uh, uh, some uh, like a strong low, the low high interaction piece the into uh, the linear equation linear operator, and then we modify the linear linear operator, uh, the, which depends on uh, the initial data. And then we, we find out the nonlinear solution uh, depending on uh, like, at, at the, as a perturbation of, of this uh, distorted linear equation. Okay, so these those two are uh, the make the problem uh, the the trickier. So and then so the in fact the, the Vento the using those two idea to obtain uh, the critical local theory. I mean, local existence theorem at critical uh, the regularity, and then uh, since uh, we are we need uh, the both the subcritical and the, lo the critical lo local theory, we 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 extended that the, the, the his argument to show subcritical local theory, and then also like uh, justifying the energy and then also persistent regularity. Okay. Okay, and then. Uh, <coughs> We perform like uh, basically the chemical marriage argument. So assuming that uh, the scattering, uh, okay. So basically, we are going to show this scattering bound, which means the a scattering norm is finite for any like solution. Okay. So which means that we are going to find out upper bound of the of the scattering norm for any any cases. <coughs> so and then. Uh, this upper bound is is no is, is true when uh, when number for 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 small data uh, because of the small data scattering is known by the, the critical local theory, <coughs> and then assuming the the large data scattering is not true, then we can find out a critical number where the this upper bound does not exist for certain. Uh, the, uh, the, the the smallest number the, where the the upper bound does not exist, okay. So that number is called LC. Then we can find out the sequence uh, whose scattering norm is infinity is converging to infinity, and then uh, 
if we can find out the sol sol sequence of the solution whose uh, scattering norm uh, is going to infinity, but mass and energy is finite, less than or equal to LC. Okay, and then for that sequence, the the first main uh, the main part of the the argument is to show there exists a, um, a critical element, right? So when uh, these critical numbers, then uh, the first thing that we want to show is that there exists a single element which is attained by by this LC. Okay. So, but in in general, in in, in general function space, so. Because uh, the uh, the uh, because of the lack of compactness of the function space, this is not uh, not direct. So we, we need to use some sort of uh, like a uh, uh, profile decomposition concentric compactness argument. So that is uh, uh, called com concentric compactness. And then, in fact, that argument contains a uh, several step. Uh, so which is called the linear profile decomposition. So this is. Uh, uh, basically, some sort of dis description of the lack of compactness of this uh, embedding, the which that which we used for for our the local theory, and then also the perturbation theory, the which mean, which means uh, the local theory. Okay, so by using such a uh, the perturbation argument, we can uh, show uh, the nonlinear profile decomposition, which basically it says. Uh, <coughs> Um, uh, 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 what can I say? Okay, uh, so we, we can use, we, we, we can obtain the nonlinear profile decomposition, and then, uh, then we can obtain like uh, the the critical element. Then by re reperforming that uh, the compactness argument, we can also show that uh, the, that critical element is very rigid. Which means it stay in, in compact orbit up to the up to the symmetry. Okay, so this is uh, like a quantitative formulation of the compactness in in, in L two. Okay, so so the basically the, the gain that we use such a compactness argument is to obtain such a uh, rigidity of the critical element, and then we're gonna use this rigidity to make a contradiction with uh, the decay estimate. Okay, so this is uh, uh, like uh, the interaction form of the uh, the monotonicity formula, right? So previously the, we have seen the time derivative of, of this is increasing; it, it is positive. So this number is has to go to the infinity when we do not truncate. If this is just at y minus x, okay? But the, we we use uh, like a truncated version of this monotonicity formula, and then to obtain this. Then this uh, has to contradict with the compactness of the orbit. Okay, so that that's how we uh, the conclude the the, uh, the 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 argument through the constant compactness. So, so, so just yeah. Small question: How did you get the H one half persists under the <coughs> compact after the compactness? So usually, you only keep the critical norm, right? I mean, so we assume the H half solution. So by co energy conservation, the we know oh, H yeah H half is conserved. Yeah, 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 sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, uh, and then, uh, okay. So let me do the final remark. In okay. So uh, basically, this remark is mostly for the the the, 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 the expert. So <coughs> uh, the 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 okay. So the first remark is uh, uh, the in the uh, proof of the the existence of the critical element. The, the, the main in ingredient is nonlinear profile decomposition. So for that, uh, since uh, we are uh, working on like uh, the L infinity in time norm, okay. So basically, so perturbation theory the give give perturbation for a very short time. But the we wanna obtain long time perturbation, okay. But in earlier work like. Uh, KDV or NLS, the, the wave equation, so they uh, succeed to uh, to obtain the long time perturbation uh, by time chopping argument. But here, the, since the our uh, the critical norm is, is involved with the L infinity in time, such a, the same type of the time chopping in critical level is not does not work. 
Okay, so uh, this is one uh, the reason uh, one on difficulty, and then the we can uh, solve we can solve this issue by uh, using the subcritical well potency. By the, other, otherwise, it, it, it is not possible to uh, obtain the the non <coughs> nonlinear profile decomposition. That is uh, the one one issue, and then uh, we hope to. Uh, uh, the the cover like uh, k equal four cases, but the k equal four is missing because uh, uh, we couldn't obtain a linear profile decomposition for for this estimate. So in fact, the linear profile decomposition is I mean, so so here alpha l infinity is is one endpoint of the the local smoothing for the Benjamin Norman flow. So uh, look the for for the endpoint equation the. the and endpoint inequality, the, the we are not able to obtain uh, the linear profile composition. So that's why the <coughs> k equal four is missing in in the, in the theorem. So, okay. So this is uh, the final comment. And thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.